This is Beginner Project Laser number 20. I'm going to put a photograph on a mirror, engrave it on a mirror, and I'm going to have to move this around because I don't know how well the camera is going to see this. And this can be done with uh, just standard mirror tiles I could get at your home store. Uh, home Depot, Lowe's, I've got mine at Menards, and I'll show you here where I got them uh, later on. But there's a couple different methods you can use to do this. And what we're going to do first here is go on the computer, and I'll show you how I'm doing it. One is just using the photograph as is, and one is using some online software. Okay, so what am I doing here? Well, here's the picture I'm working with, this uh, orange line you see out here, T1, that's my tool path, that's the size of my mirror tile. And I've taken this photo, stuck in there, I'm going to be cutting this mirror tile down and putting it in a frame later. But uh, you're going to wonder what the settings are here, so... I'm using a uh, X-Tool D1 10 watt laser image, 6,000 millimeters per minute, 100% power maximum. And here is where my settings are for this, 6,000 millimeters per minute, 100% power. The image mode I'm using is Atkinson. You can experiment with different ones, which I will show here in a moment on some uh, test mirrors I did. And I'm leaving this 300 dpi, you can increase that if you want, but I've never really seen that it made much of a difference. So what are, am I doing with this picture? Well, I played around with it a little bit. So here's the photo right here. Of course, it's been mirrored on the others on the in Lightburn because we're engraving on the back of the mirror. It's mirrored. No, I, ne I needed to reverse the image. I've played with this a couple different ways, and I have changed it to uh, grayscale, and I did a test with that, and I also took the uh, contrast and increased it, which you may want to do. It, it all depends on what your photograph is. I'm going to reset that. And I've also done this with black and white. And here again, you can play with this contrast if you wish. This program is called Photoscape. Whoops. And it's a free download. There's a pro version you can also purchase. But after a lot of uh, messing around and experimenting, I just took this picture as it is and brought it right in the light burn and let it do its uh, changing to black and white image. So here it is, and of course I resized it to fit on my tile. And of course again, I mirrored it. So that's all there is to that, but you'll need to do some experimenting as I'm going to show here. Yeah, I've done some tests. Let's see if I can do this without getting too many weird reflections, since this is a mirror. Oh, we're going to get it to focus here. There we go. This is uh, the one I've settled on using, and what I have on the back of this, just a piece of white vinyl. Uh, when I put this in the frame, it'll have a piece of white paper behind it. You could also backlight this, and I'll give you kind of an example of what I mean on these other test pieces. Okay, these are some of my other test engraves. There's uh, three of them on here. And using uh, Dithering and Atkinson and different speeds and different powers, and there's actually more than this, but I already tossed them because I didn't like them. But you can get an idea of what it's like if you backlight it. So there's a studio light behind this, or if you were to hold it or maybe put this in a window and let it backlight that way. That's another thing you can do with uh, these. Get that up there so you can kind of see it a little better. Just some ideas and suggestions on what you can do with this. There's also software that you can use to uh, process your photo, get it ready for laser engraving. And this is one of the programs here. It's called ImageR. And I'll kind of walk you through it here a little bit. So you go things and steps here. You upload your photo. So we're going to take one of these here. This one's already been cropped. We'll use that one. And you can crop it further if you wish. You can resize it, make it a different size. You can add text to it pick your material here. And we are in glass.
This is if you haven't resized it. I didn't resize it because I didn't need to. Okay, here's our image right over here, and this is kind of what it's going to look like the way I'm doing it already here. So, but this will uh, let you make some adjustments here too. You can adjust contrast here with this little slider. You want to really crank the contrast up. Or you can pull the contrast back. You can adjust the brightness. You can sharpen it. Of course, you can mirror it. mirror it back if I wanted to. Now it's back to the original, but I wanted it mirrored the way I had it. And after that, you just hit download, and you can download that and use it as it is. That's all there is to it. This is an online uh, program. It's not something you can download. You have to be online to do this. But it works pretty slick. Give me a quick little look here at uh, the piece that's uh, in progress right now and no it's not completely centered and that's fine because I've got to cut this down and put it into a frame. If you are going to keep this as a full uh, 12 by 12 although actually the tiles 11 and 7 8 by 11 and 7 8 you want to make sure you were centered a little better. Uh, it wasn't a concern here because I'm going to be cutting this down but as you can see that light reflects all over the place so you definitely want to have your safety glasses or goggles on while you are doing that. Okay, I have air assist on here. Do you have to have air assist to engrave on a mirror? No, you don't. But if you run air assist while you're doing it, it will keep your lens clean. And I don't have it cranked way up. I just have some blowing out there so I don't get any soot getting up on my lens. All right, you might also notice this is on a honeycomb board. Well, that honeycomb board is mostly just to elevate this because I have risers on this laser right now for some other projects I was doing. I didn't want to take them off. So I put a honeycomb board under there, and on top of that is an aluminum sheet. Well, that one might be stainless. Either way, when this engraves on your mirror, it will go right through the glass. So whatever's underneath is going to get engraved too. And if you use something like uh, wood or cardboard or something like that, it's going to leave a residue on the glass that can be hard to get off. If you put a shiny material underneath, like this sheet of stainless, or perhaps aluminum foil or something like that, it won't leave a residue on the glass on the other side. It's a little hint there. So what about this laser? It's an X-Tool D1. It is absolutely not the latest model. This is one of the first lasers I ever bought. And I have modified it and put a drag chain on it and I made my own air assist. Uh, back then you didn't have uh, air assist kits readily available if you wanted to put air assist on a dial laser like this you had to kind of make it yourself and that's what we have here but it works perfectly fine I also have another X-Tool D1 with the extension kit put on it that I used for uh, laser engraving large wooden signs and large uh, signs of powder coated aluminum and it takes up a lot of space this is a 10 watt I know the newer ones are you can get with a higher power now but for what I do with this particular laser, the 10 watt head is just fine. So you may be wondering why am I making a mirror tile of this car? Well, the car happens to belong to my neighbor right next door. And there's going to be an upcoming video on it here pretty soon. Uh, 1969 Camaro. And when he brought this home back in uh, 2001, it was a like drug out of a barn and full of mice and really a piece of crap. But he has since spent many, many years working on it, and it is one awesome machine. I can show you another couple of pictures of it here. This is supercharged. It's nitrous injected. 580 cubic inches and 3,000 horsepower. Just the perfect thing to use to go get groceries in. Put a picture with the hood on and the front clip. Lenko 5-speed transmission. The video I'll be doing here coming up will go into great detail on this. It's quite the car. So what am I using for mirror? This is one of the uh, more inexpensive ways to get mirror. You buy a package of these. Um, there's six of them in there. I, this came from Menards, which is one of the home stores here. You may not have a Menards by you, but Lowe's carries these, as does uh, Homely Depot and probably some of the other home stores. Occasionally you can find some pretty inexpensive mirrors at Dollar Tree 
However, be aware that they are extremely thin and very, very fragile. Okay, so a few safety things about engraving on a mirror, and as I mentioned, you need to have something underneath that is preferably not flammable because that diode beam goes right through the glass after it engraves that back off of there. It's also important to keep these on uh, when you're in close proximity to the laser like this because as you can see below, I zoomed the camera out so you can see this working, that light scatters all over the place. And though it may not seem like it's bright, if you look at that much and you look away, you're going to be seeing little blue dots and that is damaging your eyes, so keep that in mind. Okay, what about fumes? Yes, this does make kind of a, a smell. These are new mirrors. New mirrors are not made with mercury. If you find some antique mirror and you think you want to engrave on it, don't, because a lot of the really old mirrors, especially made before, say, 1970, could very well have mercury in the coating, and you don't want to be vaporizing mercury. Uh, it would be I know you can't cut mercury with a diode laser, but with the uh, reaction with the diode and burning the other chemicals, you could get some mercuric oxide going poof like this and you might be breathing that. So if you get a uh, old mirror, do something else with it. Don't try to laser engrave it. Uh, as far as ventilation, you definitely want to want to have ventilation around. Um, my shop door is wide open and I've got a fan behind me, so I can't even smell this. But if I go over there the other side of the shop, I'll pick up the scent of this uh, backing burning off. So don't do it in your living room. I'm showing you the progress here, and you may hear some background noise because I got the fan cranked up because, man, it's hot. Uh, if you've never done a photo before, laser engraved a photo, whether it be on glass or wood or whatever, note that it takes a long time. This is an hour and 37 minute engrave here. So this isn't something you're going to get done in 10 minutes. Okay, so I've done the engraving on both of these, and both was at 6,000 millimeters per minute at 100% power maximum uh, image. And here is the one done by processing with the online software. I don't know how well we can see this, but hopefully you can see that okay. And uh, if this is backlit, it's, it's really, really striking. The other one here was done by using the photo just as is as it eh, a little dusty that dust comes off and fingerprints so maybe you can see the difference here oh this is kind of tough to do it's always hard to uh, put a mirror on video as you're reflecting like everything else but that kind of gives you an idea of the difference which one do I like the best um, I like the one that I processed with the online software. So maybe that will give you a, uh, a good idea of the differences of using a photograph just as is and doing a little bit of uh, pre-processing. Okay, and I want to point out one other thing you can do with this. Uh, as I said, you can put a white background on it or if you put another mirror tile behind it. It becomes very, very striking. We can see this okay with the different reflections that are going on. But there's a mirror tile behind this, and that adds uh, a lot of depth to it. Yeah, I've got the fingerprints on there yet. So there's how we put a photograph on a mirror. Laser engraver from the back. Again, uh, when you're doing that, don't forget to wear these because that light will scatter everywhere. And don't be afraid to do some test pieces first. This was done on a scrap, of course. And then when you're done, you can decide exactly how you want to mount it or how you want to do it. So I'm very happy with the way this turned out. And I've done these before. Uh, I've never done any with a car. I've done it with people. But it works out very, very well. And uh, it's, it's a good item. Uh, to sell. There's a good market for this type of thing. If you have some examples to show a customer, uh, they usually get pretty excited and say, I want one of those. So a little something you can do, a little side hustle if you desire. Otherwise, if you're uh, new to using a laser, here's some settings you can take off with and try them out on your own. Uh, so if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.